What is going on guys? This is Mark with Reaper Airsoft and today we're going to show you a step-by-step -step guide how to troubleshoot, troubleshoot no power to your gun. Um, for this HK417, the customer was playing, all of a sudden it died. Um, put a new battery on thinking the battery was dead and still no trigger response, nothing was going on. So we're going to go through the most common issues that you guys can fix at home without freaking out or taking it to a tech. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do is try a new battery for obvious reasons. And when you go to put your battery in, make sure all your wires to your battery connector and your gun are physically together. So when you're doing this, if any of these wires come loose and pull out and it's not making a solid connection, especially on a Tamiya's, which is problematic, this could be 99% of your issue. So we got it in there. The wires seem firm. Everything seems good. We're going to pull the trigger. We got nothing. Full auto, nothing. So one of the next steps I like to do before I tear apart everything is I like to check the motor plate. I take it off and we actually check to see if the connections are on the motor terminals itself. Now most of these guns have soldered on, well they're not soldered on, they should be. I prefer them to be soldered on. Most of these guns have quick disconnects for the motor itself. So if one of these wires vibrate loose from the cycling of the gun, which is common, it's not going to respond, it's not going to do what you need to do. Um, another thing you need to look for is fuses. This gun does not have a fuse in line with it, so it's not something I can check, but your gun may. Let's see, I pressed down on the motor wires again, and if you guys haven't seen that, these are your motor contact wires. So you push down on them both to make sure that it's in, it's making good connection. So, batteries hooked back up. We've got nothing there. No full auto, nothing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check continuity. Um, for this, you need a voltmeter. If you don't have a voltmeter, I recommend buying one. You can get them as low as 10 bucks for most, most of the time. I run a Craftsman voltmeter. Um, it actually was only 20 bucks. And this is how you check it. There's a setting on your voltmeter. right here at the bottom. When you touch two leads together and there's actually continuity flowing, the electric will flow through, it'll beep. It'll let you know that it's connected. So when I touch the two probes together, it beeps. So if I was to do, say, the negative terminal here, a negative terminal, that's one solid wire, we got connection. Now you can do this with the positive connection too, and this is the way we check the trigger contacts to make the trigger con make sure the trigger contacts are still good. But in order for this to work, you have to touch the connection. You actually have to pull the trigger. Pulling the trigger, I'm not getting anything. So it's our trigger contacts that are giving the issue. So for the trigger contacts, that is a complete disassembly. It is something you're probably going to want your tech to do if you're not comfortable taking your gun apart, especially a gun like the 417 here. Um, it does have a proprietary trigger assembly from VFC so it makes it a little more difficult to deal with. So we're going to break it down and we're going to go over everything. Now on a 417 if you prop the front body pin, push down. I like to use a little tool to help push sometimes. You can pull it all the way out the other side. Close your dust cover and then you pull the upper and the lower apart. We're going to set the upper aside. We're going to slowly begin starting to break this down. Now, um, some of the time, you're going to have some issues with the delta ring. Well, not on the uh, stock. You have to loosen this. Lefty loosey, I take a punch pin, just tap it to loosen it by hand. Once you begin to unloosen it, you can unscrew the buffer tube. Set the buffer tube aside, T handle, there's a that number three T handle. Little Allen key set screw which holds the gearbox in place in the back. Is that a number three? It's not a number three, it's not a number two, what is it? No, it was a number two, it was already loose, so it just needed to be tightened down. So there's the set screw that comes out of the back of it. 
From there, we're going to take off the pistol grip. There's two screws inside the pistol grip. I'll loosen this one and see if I can get you guys at least a decent view inside the pistol grip. So I don't know if you can see it. I don't know how the light is up there. It's probably pretty crappy. Um, but there are two screws down there that you may be able to see. Let's go this angle. Maybe. Too dark. But there's two screws down there. Sometimes in some guns there's four. You just undo them all the way. And then you can take your pistol grip and pull it up and off. Um, don't force anything. You don't want to rip the contacts off the wires. Once you have the screws loose, it will pop free. And then carefully feed the wires out of the grip. Now, this is the troublesome part on the HK417 models. You have to take the selector switch off. And this is notorious for stripping out. So don't over tighten these. Don't torque them down. You don't have to do all that. But when you do take these off, you want to make sure you don't lose the little ball detent that is on the bottom of the selector switch. And this is what keeps you from save semi, that little that little notch, and you see the little ball will sit in the notches, and that's what actually clicks into place. The ball sits right there. You don't want to lose that. From there, we're going to start pushing up the gearbox. You want to be careful because of the wires actually sit outside the gearbox on both sides. And then your selector plate will sit on the left side. Another thing you want to worry worry about when you take these apart and to make sure you don't lose it. So where's my little screwdriver? There's a little spring right here for your cutoff lever. This can pop out. It sits right down in the trigger assembly. And that can pop out. So you want to make sure you don't lose that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off and I'm going to take the actual cutoff lever off because I'm going to remove the whole trigger assembly here. So first thing I'm going to do is unscrew the cutoff lever screw. Pop the cutoff lever up. Switch it out to the flathead. You take the spring out. You can leave the spring in place, it does sit there pretty good, but if you lose that, you're going to have some fun. But let's see if we can get this bad boy up now. There we go. Flip it over. There's going to be three screws. One, two, three. These three screws are what hold your trigger contact assembly in place. So we're going to undo these three screws. Then we're going to pull the whole assembly out. That way we can look at it and see what's going on. Um, thing to note, the center screw slot actually holds the spring, the return spring for the trigger contact itself. So when you go to put it back together, it is a pain in the butt. If you're having issues getting this out, it's easy to take off the back plate here and unscrew the gearbox just a hair to release the tension on the sides. Now to physically look at the trigger contacts, if you unscrew the back plate, one center screw, pull it up, take off the cover. You can actually physically pull out the trigger contacts and look at them. You got a little oxidation on them, just a little bit of arcing on the one, not the other. I'm probably going to take the whole thing apart to clean the trigger contact itself. If you're not used to doing stuff like this, I highly recommend against it and take it to a tech. That way they can do it for you. Um, early VFC models were notorious for dirty contacts, um, so they have to be cleaned quite regularly. And the HK series is actually pretty decently done. But the trigger contacts are at the downfall. Yeah, we got just a little bit of goobered arcing out over there. You can see how dark it is. So we're going to um, scrape it off, clean it up, get it back together, adjust the contacts, and uh, get it running again.
Take some paper towel and wipe the contacts off. Help clean up the surface. Um, electrical cleaner is great for this. You get all that carbon build up off of there. That way you don't have to deal with it anymore. It makes it a lot easier to do. Or a very fine file. Um, in this case, I'm just using a exacto knife to kind of scrape it clean. It's not the most efficient way to do it, but it works out pretty well. From there, I'm going to do the same thing on the trigger contacts. That I literally just wiped off the corrosion. And it's starting to arc through it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually straighten out where the trigger connects. That way it has a little more contact surface. We're going to go ahead and reseat everything. Trigger spring. Where's that other side's got it? Oh, my mess is going to be one of those days for me. Stay. So I hate this fucking setup. Spring peace. No oh, spring peace. My hands are too big. RMV. Trigger. All right, so we got it all back together. We're going to test continuity again. So I'm going to turn on the voltmeter. Set it in the positive side. Let the shrink tube hold it into place to make it a little easier on you. There. Positive side. Trigger. No, nope, as you can see, we still have nothing. Is it hooked up? There we go. Now it's touching. 
So it's actually connecting now, so we'll be able to set it back in place. We'll put it back in the gearbox, get it all set up again, and then we'll test it once it's in the gearbox and the spring's actually on the screw to return it. So assembly of this is just a reverse. Like I said, you may want to loosen a screw up a little bit to help it out, which gives you just enough space in the gearbox to hinge everything in. place. Grab three screws. Now your screw lengths, you have one long one, two short ones. Your longer one goes up top. Two short ones, one goes in the back. And then for the middle one, this is that tricky piece that you actually have to grab that spring. What I like to do is I like to take my X-Acto knife on the back side of it, press the X-Acto knife into the spring, so you actually grab one of the coils, and you need to pull the spring into position. Now this is a pain in the butt, I'm not going to lie, I absolutely hate doing it. This is the only way I've found to actually get everything to sit in place. Um, it's going to take a couple tries to get it right. And once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward and smooth. So I'm good. I'm in. Let's check continuity again. So we're going to hook up the voltmeter. Positive, positive. Pull the trigger. And as you guys can hear the beep, we're good to go. We can get it assembled again. Um, now, that is a temporary fix to that issue. All airsoft guns are going to have that issue, especially if you do a lot of semi-automatic um, with an 11-1 LiPo. There's really no way to avoid that without the, with the stock setup. What you're going to want to do is probably look at installing a MOSFET. What a MOSFET does is actually protects against that whole thing right there. That way you don't have to pull it apart and clean it all the time. You don't have to maintenance it. It's just, it prevents the oxidation buildup because your trigger no longer takes your full 11.1 volt through the trigger assembly. All your battery power goes straight from the connector to the motor and then there's a small gate wire that controls maybe a tenth of that power so you don't get the arcing out when the trigger contacts hit. Now, remember when you go put this back together, make sure you tighten your front screw up and your bottom screw up if you loosen them up. If not, you can cause your gearbox to break. We're gonna put our cutoff lever back in place first. Grab the screw. Make sure it moves. That one's a little bit too tight, so I'm gonna back the screw off just a little bit. Make sure everything's seated flush. It actually feels like you got a little bit of a burr, maybe under it. I think we do. Just pry it out. Make sure everything's cleaned up. Should be good to go now. Much better. And I can put the screw back in. Now, the spring, as you can see, the little, I'm going to call it a backwards P, actually sits in the top hole of the trigger contact area. You just press it in, and then the bottom half of that spring you can pry up and over the cutoff lever and let it drop down in place.
and then you want to just make sure it's moving. If it doesn't move and it's not free, it's not going to work. Selector plate actually drops down right above the trigger, sits in the two little notches, and it will slide back and forth. When you have it in safe, the actual arm will stop it from moving. There's your full auto and semi-auto, but when it's in safe, it's actually stopping it from moving from where it's at. So now assembly is always a trick because you got to keep all the wires in place, make sure nothing's going to get pinched, and you got to hold the selector plate in. I like to hold it on this side. That way I know it's all in place. It's not going to fall off. You want to carefully set everything in. You don't want to force it. If you don't have to force it, don't force it. There's no reason it should be forced. And just make sure all your wires sit exactly where you need them. And everything will start dropping straight in. Run your wire out the back. It's in, it's down. And what I like to do to hold everything in place, I'll put the rear screw in. That way the gearbox doesn't fidget around, move, or anything else while I'm trying to do it all. So, tighten that down. Selector switch. Inside the selector switch assembly, you'll see the plate. There is that little notch that lets you see the silver of the gearbox in the plate. What I like to do is keep that straight down. That way, when I go to put this back on, all I got to do is put it on semi auto. It's straight up and down, it's there. And if you're careful, because of the grease that's already on there, the little ball bearing will sit in place and not fall out. If you're too, too fidgety with it, if you rush it, it will fall out and I recommend a little bit of grease to help hold it in place. It'll help stay there. Now like I said before with this screw, you don't want to torque it down, you don't want to snug it down, you just want it to be tight enough that it stays in place. Good to go. Now we're going to put our pistol grip screw back on. Inside the pistol grip you're going to see three holes. One in the dead center is for your motor. The front one is for your positive wire, this being the front where your trigger would be, the back one being for your negative wire. So you're going to want to feed those through. I like to feed the back one through first just to get it out of the way. And then you're going to feed the front one through. Now when you got to put this into place, make sure your wires are not pinched under your pistol grip or else you can short out your wires and that gives you issues. So get it worked on. I'm going to screw in the first screw. These you're going to want to snug down. You don't have to torque them down, but you're going to want them to be snug in there. This is what all your weight on your motor or your gun to your pistol grip and everything is on is these two screws. So you want these two screws to be at least snug down. If you do happen to drop a screw, just give it a shake. It'll fall out. Just try your best to line it up. Um, the more you do it, the more you'll get used to it. So, don't get all nervous or panicky if you can't get it on the first few tries. Alright, so I got those two down. You can see both my wires naturally sit in the back half of the gearbox. The negative wire should sit straight back against the back housing. The positive wire actually goes down and folds over. Let me see if I can get my phone. Let me turn on flashlight. Try and shine in there. Let's see if maybe you guys can see how those are sitting. Right there. Maybe. Right there. Um, I know it's not the best view in the world, guys, but uh, that way a little. That way a little. Yeah, there we go. You can see how the wires sit there just perfect. Um, that's how you want it. That way your motor doesn't hit any wires. They're not in the way and they'll actually wrap around the back side of the motor. Now your positive terminal should be in the front of the body, to the front of the body. Everything should drop down freely. Hook up your negative terminal first. Your positive wire comes up, up and over top, and back down. So your wires will sit like that. Pretty straightforward. 
Now we're going to do the rear pistol grip, and this is where you want to make sure your wires don't get caught up in anything. It doesn't get smashed in there or anything else. So you want to make sure your wires tuck off to the side. I like to make sure the screws aren't in there first when I do this. That way I know for sure the wires aren't getting pinched. Once you got the plate down, you just push down a little bit of pressure. You can push in the, you can screw in the screws. Now, if you do pinch a wire, like I said, you can grind it out. You can ruin your gear, uh, wiring. You can ruin your gun. You can fry your motor. You can pretty much screw the whole thing up. So take your time. Make sure you get it right. If you got to pull the motor back out, pull the motor back out. If you got to reseat it a couple times to get it there, reseat it a couple times. They're both tight. Hook up the battery. Click it in the semi-auto. Now you can hear it a little bit of whine. I gotta adjust the motor height for it being reset. Um, but it's gonna fire, it's shooting again, everything's done, it's fixed. So that is a step-by-step -step process of how to determine if you need to clean your contacts or if it's your battery or if it's just a motor wire that came off. If you guys have any questions on this process or need to see something in a little more detail, let me know. If you could, like, share, comment, subscribe, I'd appreciate it.